So welcome back from lunch. I hope everyone's uh, full and ready for the, uh, for the rest of the sessions today. Um, I'm going to talk about YUM, RPM, and Arkanoa Package Manager. As uh, everyone here, let me, let me back up. Um, before I ask if you've used Arkanoa Package Manager, has anyone used YUM to install applications? OK, good, good. Um, so um, let's get right into it then. Maintenance issues, right? We always have to figure out how we're getting software updated and installed. So why RPM? Um, RPM is a decent package management um, framework. It's a framework. It's an architecture. Uh, it's, it's modern. It's used on a number of different Linux distributions. And it is the way forward for us on OS2 and Blue Lion. One of the nice things that it does, would you kindly, Roderick? There you go. It's next page. Thank you. Yes, it is. Uh, <clears throat> So why, why yum? Well, RPM is terrific if you've got the package already downloaded and you want to install it. RPM-I, whatever the package is, and it will install it. Yum is very handy because what yum will do is it will go out to the internet and grab whatever packages from your configured repositories are required to meet the, the dependencies of whatever it is that you really want to install. And of course, what we know from Linux, what is the worst part of running Linux package dependency hell? I need to install X, but I need Y. I can't find Y. I found Y. Y needs Z. Where am I going to get Z? Well, what Yum does is it, if you have all of these repositories configured, is it goes and finds where all these packages are from wherever your configured repositories may be downloads them, and then feeds them to RPM to install onto the system. And it in this way, it handles those dependency issues, and you don't just get a blank error message staring at you on the screen. Cannot install because there's no provider for blah. Again, it's the way forward for us. Why Arkanoa Package Manager? I can't tell you, at all the warp stocks in the United States, um, over the last few years, people complain to me in sessions and outside of sessions that they run OS2, whether it's still warp 4, warp 4.5.2, Ecom station, because they don't like Windows, or they have an invested uh, application base on the platform and the only other thing that they could possibly run is Linux and they don't want to run Linux and they say to me time and time again we're porting so much software from Linux OS2 is becoming more like Linux and I don't want to learn Linux if I want to learn Linux and I'm going to use Linux and I'm not going to use OS2 Arkanoa Package Manager helps with that because you don't need to know RPM and YUM to use Arkanoa Package Manager. It's a very nice front end. It's a native OS2 application, and it feels like an OS2 application. You don't have to learn all of the complicated syntax for RPM and YUM. That is not to say that Arkanoa Package Manager will handle every conceivable operation that you can do at the command line with yum and rpm what we tried to do was cover the essential bits so that you could keep the system updated and download and install new packages and remove packages there are certain operations we did add some maintenance operations to arkanoa package manager because honestly i will tell you in my own experience um, the RPM database is fragile and YUM can get confused 
and RPM can get confused. And Yum complains that the uh, that the RPM database has been modified outside of Yum. On Linux, I'm a SUSE user. We use Zipper. Zipper doesn't behave like that, but Yum does. Um, so what we did was we added the essential features to Arkanoa Package Manager to help keep the database clean and, and usable. But there are operations that you may, in advanced circumstances, need to run from the command line. But 99% of users will be able to get by with Arkanoi Package Manager just fine for years and years and years. Yum will never handle warp in archives. It's a completely different database, it's a completely different architecture, it's just not part of what Yum does. I mention this now and I want to come back to it in a little bit because right now Arkanoa Package Manager does not handle warp in either. But that's going to change. Arkanoa Package Manager will be the way forward. I can't say to someone getting a new distribution of OS2 that in order to maintain it, you'll need to learn a Linux application, get to a command line, and start typing. But I can say that we're providing you with a graphical application to keep your system updated and to be able to install new packages of software. Slide, please. So, how does all of this tie into Blue Lion? All of this is integral to, to Blue Lion. When you install Blue Lion, you get the Arkanoa Package Manager and the YUM and RPM stuff on the back end. You get essentially the um, Linux compatibility layer, if you will, that's, that is laid down with the operating system. It is not an optional component. It is a mandatory component. A lot of the, the portions of the operating system will only be updatable using YUM. So for instance, when we do an installation of the libc modules, the only way you're going to be able to update them is from the RPM package. Otherwise, you're going to end up with an, just an absolute mess. So what we're doing is we're making the updating feature integral to the operating system. You'll be able to do that. So when there are new libraries available, you'll be able to download them and install them. And because we maintain our own repositories, in addition to the NetLabs repositories, subscription content will be available through the Arkanoi Package Manager. It is the only practical way to maintain Blue Lion. Otherwise, if you're going to download a bunch of zip files and uninstall them, don't open tickets for us. There's absolutely no way that we can possibly figure out what you're running. Uh, and we, I mean, even now we have issues where we deal with people with mixes of, of things reporting issues and trying to figure out what piece was pulled from somewhere else is impossible. So this is the only way you're going to be able to maintain the system. But it's easy. It's, you'll like it. It's a great tool. We spent a tremendous amount of time developing and debugging and refining this tool before we made it public. So current features. So you can search for a package by name or included file. This is always um, one of those difficult things. Um, I know I need to include X, but I don't really know the name of X. It's something like, well, you can search for something like, so you can use wildcards in your search. You know that you need a file, but you're sure that the package is not the name of the file. So it's a DLL that's included with something else. You can search for a package that contains that DLL. 
you can use the quick install feature. So when you are testing a new build of Firefox and the README says you need to install these 27 different packages, you can copy that string from the README, use the quick install option from the, the um, menu, the main menu, and paste that entire string into the quick install module. Now here's what's very interesting about that. Let's say of those 27 packages, you have 10 of them already installed. Well, we don't care about that. We just skip past those and install the ones that you don't have. And if there are updates to the ones that you already have installed, we'll grab those updates and update them too. So that you end up with the latest version of all of those prerequisites. And all you need to do was copy, paste, and click the button. And you can easily browse through a list of available packages. We identify um, packages that are new to the repository, so you can see what's, what's been uploaded. And there's all sorts of new stuff that, that gets uploaded. Um, one of the things it, I sort of think about on a regular basis is the, the Firefox project is sort of like the space program. And you know, one of the things that we that's always pointed up as an example of something that grew out of the space program was Tang, the, the powdered drink, because astronauts needed some sort of a powdered drink. All sorts of interesting new useful packages get created as part of these other larger projects that are going on. Well, you may not even know that these packages are available, but three months from now you're going to need that for something else that you want to run. When these packages land in the repository, they're flagged. There's an icon that lets you know that they're new. If you already have a, a package installed, there's an icon that lets you know when there's a new version of that available to download and install. So as I say, you can, you can search for a package by name or the included file, and then when you find it, you can remove it. So. You've installed something and your system is acting in an unusual manner. So you go to the usual source for official uh, help and assistance, which is an OS2 world forum. And someone there with questionable experience says, oh, well, what you need to do is you need to uninstall X. So obviously you take this for gospel and you say, well, I'm just going to rip it out. <laughs> well, you can find it and rip it out. No guarantees as to what else might not work. However, RPM is very interesting in that when you remove something that is a dependency for something else, the system will tell you that if you're about to remove something and as a result, such and such is not going to work. Or we're going to remove, if you're removing X, we're going to remove Y and Z. Well, no, no, okay, I, I thought better of the idea now. But if you really do need to remove something, it's very simple. You find it either by searching or by scrolling through the list. You click on it, you right click on it, remove, done. And if you find that that really didn't solve your problem because your problem is somewhere else, like a bad memory module, you can reinstall the package as soon as you replace that bad memory module. Slide, please. Updating packages, as I see, you can, you can as I say, you can see uh, what packages you already have installed that have updates waiting. Uh, I shouldn't say waiting, available, available. And you can update one, several packages or all packages. In fact, if you go to the, um, the wiki on the uh, Arkanoe site for um, Arkanoe Package Manager, there are some um, best practices that, that we have listed there. There are certain packages that you may, want to, you may want to update before you update everything. OS2 Base is a very basic but important package. And sometimes there are changes in OS2 base that will affect what you should 
update afterwards or install afterwards. So the recommendation is if there's an update to OS2 base as well as five other packages, update OS2 base first. Then go ahead and update the rest of your packages, do an update all. Um, but the idea is that with Arkanoi Package Manager, it makes it very easy to do that. All you need to do is see that, oh, there, there's the icon that says that there's an update to OS2 base. And we even tell you what the details are, the version you're running versus the version that's available. Right click on, on OS2 base, update. Once the update's done, finish the rest of your, your updating. Uh, <laughs> and if you need to roll back, you can use the, the feature um, install specific version and roll back to an earlier version of a package. Um, this is especially helpful if you have the experimental repo also enabled, also added to your list of repositories. It's called experimental for a reason. And so if you find something you just can't live with, you can always downgrade to the stable version of the package and go back to the way things were before. So, yes? Someone have a question? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm working on the other presentation. I have to get Thank you. If you upgrade from X five to x6.1 mm -hmm. and then find out that x6.1 has a bug that uh, can you roll back to 6.0 if 6.0 is available if yes it exists but you never had it correct you yes you can you can certainly do that you okay. can certainly do that you don't need to roll back to a version that you already had installed okay, okay. that's an excellent question that and that that does come up uh, repository management. So we have the ability to pull these packages from repositories, but we need some way to add or remove repositories. Well, we have a repository manager in Arkanoi Package Manager. And you can add, remove, or edit your repositories. Uh, usually you don't have to edit them. Once, once you know that you're able to get uh, packages, you shouldn't really have to edit them. Um, but NetLabs, of course, is your basic repository. The NetLabs stable repository should be enabled on all installations. Experimental if you're developing stuff or you have a, a desire to make yourself a guinea pig. Um, you can... You can also add the Arkanoe stable and or experimental repositories. Right now, um, we don't have anything in either of those that are unique to Arkanoe. Um, the Arkanoe subscription repository, you need to use your Arkanoe credentials. Uh, that one you can add. Uh, there is one package there right now, which is um, uh, USB IDs which is an update to the USB database. Um, it's updated every few months, and it's built as uh, an RPM, and you can install that if you have a subscription service. Your credentials for the repository, any, and by the way, anyone else on the planet could set up a repository on the internet and you can use this for that. This is in no way tied to Arkanoe directly. This, this application is completely free for everyone to use, whether, you're, whether you are a subscription customer of ours or whether you purchase Blue Lion. You can always download and use Arkanoe Package Manager, and you can access repositories anywhere on the internet or even local repositories that you set up for your own machines on the network. So you can create a network share with packages that you want your users to be able to access and add that repository to your list of repositories and just have one machine to download from the internet and all of your local machines download from that. 
If you have a, an authenticated repo, such as the Arc and OA subscription repo, you can store your credentials securely, and the credentials cannot be copied between machines, so someone can't steal your Arc and OA credentials and walk off of it uh, and plug it into another machine. You say that may not be copied, but you said can't be copied. Um, that's a very interesting, you know, you English with this language thing, you know, it's... There's a difference. Both are true. Both are true. Both are true. All right, so this is what happens. When we encrypt the credentials, we encrypt them with a key that is based on a unique fingerprint from your machine. That's not to say that you can't use your credentials on however many machines for which you've subscribed to Arcanoe. But you can't take that configuration for Arcanoe Package Manager and just copy it to a thumb drive, stick it in another machine. It won't decrypt the credentials that way. And it's really, I mean, it's not meant as any form of, of copy protection. It's really meant to keep the credentials safe. Yeah. That's, that's all that it is. Uh, we, we go to great lengths to ensure that when you log into the Arkanoe website with your credentials, everything is transmitted securely. Um, we use the tightest encryption we can. We have an extended validation certificate. I mean, if you notice at the Arkanoe site, when you shift to HTTPS, we have the green bar. You have no idea what you have to go through to get one of those certificates. It is such a pain. <laughs> <sighs> but we do everything we can to ensure to to give you peace of mind that when you contact the Arkanoe website, it is really the Arkanoe website, and when you transmit data to us, that data is safe coming to us. Slide, please. So these are uh, just a few of the upcoming features for Arkanoe Package Manager, and as I say, uh, or as I've said. Right now, we are so focused on Blue Lion development, all of this is going to come after Blue Lion's release. So don't expect this until sometime 2017. Um, so what we want to do is we want to support Warpin uh, archives. Uh, how do we do that? Well, uh, we worked closely with Paul Ratcliffe to add the ability to create repositories of Warpin archives. Any place can have a repository of Warpin archives. Um, I haven't approached the archiver at Hobbs about, about this, but it's certainly doable. It's essentially just a listing that's created with WIC of content of WPI files and executable Warpin archives throughout an entire directory structure. Um, we will be able to handle those the same way that we handle RPM repositories. Uh, the latest, that's in the latest WIC. And we'll be able to add, remove, and edit these repositories just like we add, remove, and edit YUM repositories. And they'll be, we can handle authenticated ones too. So again, if you have a need for credentials, you'll be able to do it that way. Um, why are we supporting Warpin when everyone's shifting over to RPM and YUM? Because Warpin archives aren't going away. There's plenty of great software that's already been released. It's mature, it's stable, and it's available as Warpin. The problem is there is no glue between your Warpin database and your YUM database, your RPM database, and conflicts occur. There you go. So this way, it brings us closer to being able to manage those conflicts better. We're not going to be able to fully resolve them without human intervention, but we can at least take a step to read the one database and read the other database and say, you know what? We may have a problem here. Thank you. Um, 
And you're going to have a single unified interface for managing these these archives the same way you'll you'll be able to manage the the RPMs. And as I say, package conflicts. And this is this is a constant issue. And it's really just a result of our transitioning from warp in to RPM. No one did anything wrong by installing libc from wpi all right there was it's completely acceptable it's fine it's perfect it's great now of course we're installing libc to a completely different directory farther usually farther down the path maybe it's in front of the path it belongs in front of the path but you end up with extra copies and sometimes you can't tell which copy is getting read and which copy is not. So you think you're using the latest libc, and you're not using the latest libc because the one that you're loading is loading from somewhere else. So you'll be able to see those conflicts and work to resolve them. You'll be able to see, well, I want to install libc from NetLabs, but I already have, from the NetLabs yum repository, but I already have the warpin installed. Well, the idea is that what we want to do is give you the opportunity to uninstall the warp in one and then install this one. That switches you over. And now it's not a problem anymore. It'll never be a problem again. Uh, until you have a warp in application, which a uh, warp in package, which requires the libc warp in. Now, that's a very interesting, a very interesting point, which I ran into not, not too long ago. And that may be a matter of us, just like there are virtual RPMs that essentially fulfill dependency um, uh, requirements in the RPM database so that RPM believes that you have certain things installed, we can create a warp-in package that is a virtual warp-in package that will say, yes, if something is looking to make sure that I installed the warp-in of libc, the warping of libc is installed as long as the RPM of libc is installed. Yeah, all those conflict things, believe me, in our testing, we hit tons of them. Tons of them, please. So that's one of the things we want to do is we want to handle those conflict uh, issues. And the idea is that we want to be able to switch then from warp into RPM, not just warn you, hey, we're going to have a problem. But, you know, well, that only gives you like half the, the information, right? So we're going to have a problem. How are we going to fix the problem? It's not that easy to just uninstall one and install the other, because by the time you uninstall the, the WPI of libc, half your system is no longer working. And how are you going to get the other one installed? Well, if you install the other one first, now you're stuck with two of them. Then you have the problem with, well, when you go to uninstall the WPI one, you have the same problem that you had before, where the next time you go to install something, it tells you that it's not there. And obviously, you know it's there because everything else it needs, it's running. So these are things that are going to take some time for us to work out the logic as to how best to, to handle them. I, do I have one more? I think I just have Q&A next. Yes, Q&A. So, the, before, I, before I get to the Q&A, let me give an answer first. Um, the important thing to remember is don't be resistant to change. Uh, as OS2 users, we're terribly resistant to change. That's why we're still using an operating system that's 20 years old. Um, but the fact of the matter is, RPM is a much better way for us to handle these things, particularly for ported applications. In the Linux world, there's nothing like warp in. It doesn't work like that. You, you don't install clusters of DLLs and then you have 15 copies of the same one. I mean, you, you can end up with different copies for different things, but the installation isn't done that way. And all the ported applications are done along the, the lines of the way a Linux application would be done. So when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So it's time to move away from WPI when there are alternatives 
in the new system. Arkanoi Package Manager makes it easier for you to do that. And in the, in the long haul, it will be the easiest way to maintain your system. Okay, now I can take some questions. Um, does uh, the Arkanoa Packet Manager, or will it also handle the case that you want to have two versions of the same package uh, in one system? For instance, I would, uh, could want to have two uh, versions of Firefox in my system, each configured with different XPIs that are mutually exclusive to visit some websites. Right now that's an advanced feature that you would normally do with the command line and essentially what you do, what you would do is you would redirect the installation of that other pack, that conflicting package to something like um, user local and put it under there so it doesn't conflict with with that's how you solve it in traditional OSI. correct you wrap it into two different ways and then so we haven't thought about how to automate that process in Arkanoi package manager but it's a it's certainly a good idea and it's something that we'll consider doing mm -hmm. anyone else yeah okay <laughs> As a developer, I've made a number of programs which are all in the bin. Mm -hmm. What do I have to do to be able to use RPM and YUM? To repackage your programs? Exactly. Okay. If you go to the, uh, the NetLabs wiki, for the NetLabs track for RPM and YUM, there are some excellent packaging instructions and links. Essentially, if you follow the guides at Fedora, for Fedora, I should say, you'll pick up on how to build those RPM packages. Believe me, Warpin is a breeze compared to building your first few RPMs. A breeze. But, once you get the hang of it, once you get the, the knack of it, it's really nothing more than that. It's a script. The nice thing about RPMs is that RPMs can have scriptlets contained within the, the spec file. And they can also call things from outside. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to figure out what's the best way to, to do things. And because OS2 is not Linux, the directions for Linux don't always apply to how we ought to do things. So we need to figure those out along the way. But the starting point is going to the, the, the NetLabs track for the RPM project and follow the, the link there to instructions for packagers and the links that are there. That page is very good and it's reasonably updated or up to date. Is there any uh, solution for uh, different languages? I mean, I want to download a particular program mm -hmm. and use it, but I want it in Chinese, for example. That's not an issue for RPM. That's an issue for That's you would it depends on the application actually yeah how the application provides the translation the, the, the traditionally uh, linux way is that all translations are installed at once and the one you need is selected to, through your lang environment settings so this is how some packages that we port from linux uh, and from unix work so you would have an rpm yes. that contains all the language files yes, yes. Yeah. And you would have to pick that RPM to install. Otherwise, you get only the default language that comes in the, in the package. Well, this is the same way we're doing warp in. You get all the packages. Right. You, you uh, look what the local language is, and you load that by default, and you can add or not. The rest. Right. So See, now, Argonaut a Package Manager, with the languages that we have a available, you download the just the other languages that you want instead of one 
big package of languages. But as you know, you can do it either either way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Good, everyone's an expert on YUM, RPM, and Arkanoid Package Manager. Uh, I know it's difficult to talk about some of this stuff in the abstract. Once you get to, to use it a bit, um, you'll find that there are certain things that may not quite work the way you expect. Again, like all Arkanoid stuff, please open a ticket. If, if it doesn't work the way you expect it, or um, if you don't know something, contact us, let us know. Um, we're here to help. It's a great tool. Yum and RPM are now working very, very well uh, on OS2. They've come a, a really long way. Um, and I think that the tool will, will make the experience much better for OS2 users. It feels like OS2. I, you don't even know that there's anything, there's anything Linuxy about it on the back end. Anything else? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you.